course on probability and statistics. This is an introductory course or you can say a first course on the probability and statistics and it is quite useful for all branches of science and engineering. Uh, so, this will always exist. They are called monotone sequences. So, we say that a sequence E n is said to be monotonic increasing if E n is a subset of E n plus 1 for n is equal to 1, 2 and so on. In a similar way, we define E n to be monotonic decreasing if E n is a containing E n plus 1 for n is equal to 1, 2 and so on. Let us consider some example here. Let E n be the interval say 0 to 1 by n. Then E n is monotonically decreasing sequence. Uh, further, we can consider the say sequence E n is equal to interval say minus n to n, then E n is monotonically increasing. One important result which is true for the monotonic sequences is that the limit always exists. I will state it in the form of a theorem here. If E n is monotonically increasing, then limit of E n is equal to union of E n, n is equal to 1 to infinity. In a similar way, if E n is monotonically decreasing, then limit of E n is the intersection of the sequence of sets E. Uh, to look at the proof, uh, let me prove the statement one first. If we take the E n to be monotonically increasing sequence of sets, then the union E n will be same for all n and therefore, limit superior will be same. Let me explain it further. If we consider limit superior of E n, then it is equal to intersection union E n, n is equal to m to infinity, m is equal to 1 to infinity. This will be equal to simply union n is equal to 1 to infinity since union e n n is equal to m to infinity will be the same
for all n as en is subset of en plus 1 for all n further if we look at limit inferior of the sequence then this is union intersection en n is equal to m to infinity now in the intersection en this is starting from em em plus 1 intersection em plus 2 etc since the sequence is monotonically increasing the first set in this sequence is the smallest set and it is contained in all the uh, sets which are coming after this therefore the intersection will be equal to the first set itself and therefore it is equal to em that means we are getting limit infimum as also union of ems if we combine these two results the limit exists and it is equal to the union of the sets the proof of the second statement can be given by direct argument as in one or we can use d morgan's laws Uh, let me state as exercises a few more results which are related to the limit of the sequence of the sets for example if i consider limit superior of a sequence of sets and if i take complementation of that then it is equal to limit inferior of the complements of the sets in a similar way if i consider limit inferior of the sequence of sets and i take its complement then it will be equal to the limit superior of the complements of the sets uh, the proofs will be almost trivial if we make use of the uh, lemma 1 which gave the representation of the limit superior and limit inferior and make use of the de morgan's laws an extension of this exercise would be if i consider f minus limit infimum of the sequence en then it is equal to limit superior of f minus en in a similar way if i consider f minus limit superior of en that is equal to to prove say uh, the first part of this we can consider f minus limit inferior of en and let us write down the representation of the limit inferior in terms of unions and intersections n is equal to m to infinity m is equal to 1 to infinity and at this we just use a set theoretic notation where a minus b is equal to a intersection b complement so this becomes f intersection union intersection en n is equal to m to infinity m is equal to 1 to infinity complement that is equal to f intersection intersection union en complement if we apply de morgan's laws now at this stage we can apply the distributive properties of the unions and intersections 
and this will give us intersection m is equal to 1 to infinity union n is equal to m to infinity f intersection e n complement which is equal to intersection union f minus e n where n is equal to m to infinity m is equal to 1 to infinity and this is nothing but the limit superior of the sequence f minus e n. In a similar way we can prove the statement 2 of this. Uh, there are certain relations which include the characteristic functions of the limit superior and limit inferior and I will state it as a uh, statement in the following exercise. Indicator function of the limit inferior of a sequence of sets is the limit infimum of the indicator functions of the sequence of the sets. In a similar way, if we consider indicator function of the limit superior, then it is equal to limit superior of the sequence of the sets we may look at the proof of say one of them consider say x belonging to E star then this implies that x belongs to E n for all but finitely many values of n. This implies that the indicator function of the set E n is 1 for all but finitely many values of n which is equivalent to the statement that limit infimum of the indicator function chi e n x is equal to 1 and these statements are both if and only if. Further if I consider x not belonging to e lower star then this will imply that x does not belong to E n for infinitely many values and this implies that limit infimum of chi e n x is 0. In a similar way if we use the definition of the limit superior of a sequence of functions then we will be able to prove the second statement. A useful relation which is used for in set theory is that of symmetric differences. The concept of symmetric difference is defined by a delta b is equal to a minus b union b minus a. So, you can see here that it is a minus b and b minus a both are combined together and that is why it is called a symmetric difference and an equivalent interpretation for this is a union b minus a intersection b. From the Venn diagrams we can see that if I have two sets a and b then the symmetric difference is the shaded portion. Certain relationships which are true for set theoretic operations are given in the form of exercises below.
prove that E minus F is equal to E minus E intersection F it is equal to E union F minus F E intersection F minus G is equal to E intersection F minus E intersection G E union F minus G is equal to E minus G union F minus G E minus G intersection F minus G is equal to E intersection F minus G E minus F minus G is equal to E minus F union E intersection G E minus F minus G is equal to E minus F union E intersection G E minus F intersection G minus H is equal to E intersection G minus F union H. Certain relationships which are true for the symmetric differences are given in the next exercise. For example, symmetric difference of E with F is same as symmetric difference of F with E. Symmetric difference satisfies associative property that is E delta F delta G is same as E delta F delta G. E intersection F delta G it is equal to E intersection F delta E intersection G that means intersection and symmetric differences are distributive. If we consider the symmetric difference of a set with the empty set then we get the same set that means as a group theoretic operation empty set acts as an identity operator. If we consider with the full space then I get the complementation. If we consider with itself then we get empty set that means with respect to group theoretic operation E is its own inverse and if we consider E delta E complement then I get the full space. So, one can ask that the class of all subsets of omega forms an abelian group with respect to symmetric difference operation. Further, if we consider the indicator function of the symmetric difference then it is equal to the absolute difference between the indicator functions of the two sets. An alternative way of telling it is that it is equal to chi E plus chi F where the sum is taken modulo 2. An additional exercise in this direction can be that if we consider A, B, C and D then A delta B is equal to C delta D 
if and only if a delta c is equal to b delta d. In order to prove this statement 5, we proceed as follows. We show that either equality is equivalent to the statement that every point of x is in 0, 2 or 4 of the sets a, b, c, d. So, let us consider x to be any point in the space omega, then there are 5 possibilities. Let us consider these possibilities. One possibility is that x belongs to none of the sets. If x does not belong to any of the sets, then with respect to this point a delta b and c delta d, they must be equal because x is non none of them. If we consider x belongs to exactly one of sets, say x belongs to A, in that case A delta B will consist of the point x and C delta D will not include this point. If we consider x belonging to any two sets, let us take x belongs to A and x belongs to B, then clearly x does not belong to A delta B because the points which are common to both are excluded from the symmetric difference and x does not belong to C delta D. So, A delta B will be equal to C delta D. Let x belongs to A and x belongs to D. Then, x will belong to A delta B and x will belong to C delta D. Let us consider the possibilities that x belong to any three sets say A, B and C, then x will not belong to A delta B and x will belong to C delta D. If we consider x belongs to all four sets, then clearly x does not belong to A delta B and x does not belong to C delta D. Thus, we have proved that every point of x is in 0, 2 or 4 of the sets A, B, C, D implies statement 1. Similar statement holds for B. Hence, A and B must be equivalent.
to end this class we look at one or two more examples of the limit infimum limit supremum and let e n be equal to 0 to 1 minus 1 by n semi open interval if n is odd and it is equal to 1 by n to 1 if n is even. Then if we look at limit inferior it is the open interval 0 to 1. If we consider any uh, real number between 0 to 1 then we can always find a capital N such that the point A will belong to both 0 to 1 minus 1 by n and 1 by n to 1 for all n greater than or equal to capital N. Therefore, the point will certainly belong to the limit inferior set. Since it will belong to limit inferior, it will also belong to the limit superior and limit superior cannot be bigger than the interval 0, 1. Therefore, it is also equal to limit superior and therefore, the limit of the sequence exists and it is the open interval 0 to 1. Let me complete today's lecture by giving the final exercise. Let us consider a sequence of defined by that d1 is equal to e1, d2 is equal to d1 delta e2, in general dn is equal to dn minus 1 delta en for n is equal to 2, 3 and so on. Show that the limit of the sequence dn exists if and only if limit of the sequence e n is equal to 5. Uh, in next class, we will introduce the concepts of uh, certain algebraic structures such as rings, sigma rings, uh, fields and sigma fields which are eventually going to be used for the definition of a probability function. Thank you.